up guys GT here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can dial in the legendary goosebumpy if that's even a word tone from the one and only Steve Stevens Top Gun guitar anthem you've all heard it you all want to play it in this video I'm going to show you how you can get close to the tone let's dial it in Now hold on, before I actually show you how you can do any of that, I want to give some background about why I'm doing some of the things that you're going to be hearing later in this video. Now I always do some research before I dial in any given tone from any given artist as to come close to what amp or what sort of gear they were using at least at that point in time. Now this has been clearly one of the most incredible discoveries or most incredible things that I've found on the internet. I'm going to share a post from the man himself, Steve Steven, where he's clearly specified what gear he has used in this particular track which has made my life and I'm, I'm sure thousands of other lives much much more easier as well. So let's go through the post in detail, let's find it, here it is. Top Gun was recorded during the sessions for Billy Idol's Whiplash Smile album. The amp was indeed my late 60s Marshall era plexi with matching basket weave cabinets. Speakers must have been greenbacks. I did use a boss compressor for added sustain as the mood really required long soaring notes. I believe Dave always recorded me with a combo of three microphones, a Shure SM57, Sennheiser 421 and a nice old Newman U67. We definitely favored the U67. These are amazing classic rock guitar mics. Guitar used was my trusty Charvel San Dimas Glow in the Dark. Amazing post and kudos to Steve Steven for putting out exactly what he used. And I feel more artists should really do this, right? <laughs> I mean, when you go tone chasing, when you want to dial in a specific tone from a particular track, from a particular artist, you have to spend hours and hours on the internet scouring for clues, finding out different answers from different places as to what you know tone, uh, what gear was used on that tone. Now, I don't have any of those things <laughs> mentioned in the particular post, but I do have a good guitar and the AxeFX too, which can pretty much get me close to the kind of tone I want to dial in. So let's jump into the Axe Edit and let's dial it in. Alright guys, so I've got the axe edit in front of me like always and I've already selected the amps and the caps for you. Why did I choose these things? If you missed the first part of this video where I talk about Steve Stevens post, please go do and check it out. It's going to make much more sense as to why I'm making some of the choices that I do. So the amp is a Plexi 100 watt 1970. Steve mentioned that he's kind of used a late 60s uh, Marshall Plexi around that era, but we don't have that specific amp in the Axe FX2, but we have 1970 late 60s, 1970s, <laughs> kind of makes sense. Anyway, so I think this amp kind of comes closest to the kind of tone I'm looking for. So we've got that amp and for the cabs, I've got two cab blocks here because we want to do three mics. So a particular cab block will only allow you to do one, two mics at the maximum. So I've got two cabs in here. The first cab is basically a four by 12 basket weave. As he mentioned, he used basket weave cabinets. This is the G12 H30 uh, speaker sort of a setup with this red wire cabinet. I've mic'd this up with U67 condenser, low cuts and high cuts are a default. Uh, the second cab is a Stereo Ultra S. This is a F037 this time. This is a different cab, but still a basket weave greenbacks. I believe a red bias cabinet again. This is a G12 M25 and I've got the first one with 57 dynamic and the second one as 421 dynamic as mentioned in his post. And obviously the low cut and high cut are at stock settings. So let's hear how everything is sounding at the stock settings. I am playing my Ernie Ball Music Man JP15 guitar. You've heard this countless number of times on the channel. I'm on the bridge pickup, volumes on full, tones on full. This is how the guitar is sounding at the moment. It's got that character, but it's definitely missing a lot of things. So let's start doing them one by one. The first thing he's mentioned is used, he's used a boss compressor in this beginning of the signal chain, I believe. So we don't have a boss compressor in the Axe FX2. We do have a pedal comp, so let's go ahead and use that. I'm gonna select a compressor block here. I'm gonna change it from studio comp to pedal comp one. Uh, he mentioned he used a lot of compression because he wanted loud soaring notes and a lot of sustain. So we're going to have the compression pretty high up around 5.6, 5.5 seems fine. I'm going to bring down the attack to 1 milliseconds so that the compressor kicks in 
as soon as it can release i'm going to keep it to 15 seconds milliseconds i want it to release quickly as well not hold it on for too long and i don't think i touched anything else at the moment so let's go ahead to the amp and change a few things over there we definitely want more drive what you heard in the beginning was sounding quite dull and dry uh, with the stock settings so we're going to tweak and add more gain because why not everybody will have more gain so let's go ahead and tweak the treble drive to around 8.7 Normal drive to around 8.9. Bass, I'm gonna cut down quite a lot because the preset will have a ton of reverb in the end and it's gonna end up sounding quite boomy if you have a lot of bass. So bring down the bass 2.5, mids also bring it down to around 0.8. My guitar is more mid-based, so I'm having low mids. You might need to dial in some more mids based on your gear. Treble, I'm gonna push up quite a lot around 8.5. And presence also I'm gonna push up to give us that top end which we need to around 8.4. The preset was sounding quite boomy when it was in the stock settings, so hence the extra presence and the extra treble. Master volume is a tricky knob with most of the amps in the Axe FX2, and you gotta find that sweet spot. At 10, this one sounds quite muddy and quite unclear so i brought down the master volume to around 4.6 what that's going to do is reduce the overall level of the preset quite a lot so i'm going to push the level up so to compensate for that by pushing it to around 5.4 or 5.2 even works fine The other thing that I want to do is obviously go ahead and tweak the caps before I make you hear anything is I'm going to change the high cut and low cut accordingly to my taste, what works well for my gear. Uh, first one is around 1750. Uh, at the high cut, low cut, I always set it at 80 hertz. The second cab, I'm going to go into the advanced section because it's an ultra stereo, uh, ultra red stereo. High cut, I'm going to bring it down again to 9900. Now, the other thing that he also mentioned is that he definitely favored the U67 mic more. So to simulate that sort of a feeling, what you can do is bring down the level of the second cap block. This might not be the exact way that he did it, but this is a quick and easy way to prefer the other mic or the other cab a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is bring down the level of this cabinet to around minus 3.6. So that way, 57 and 471 are kind of uh, lower in volume and U67 is kind of higher in volume. You could do it other way around as well. You could increase the volume of U67, but I like this way more. I actually meant to set the amp level at five minus 5.4 dB, not 5.4 dB. So please go ahead and correct that. It should be minus 5.4 dB. And with that done, this is how it's sounding at the moment. Definitely lost a lot of gain, even though we have the gain set quite high. That's probably because you have a compressor right in the beginning and it's definitely going to make your gain go down a bit. What you can do to fix that is a couple of things. You could either insert a drive block between your compressor and the amp to fix that to have more gain. But what I like to do is push the level of the compressor that will push the amp a little bit more and it's going to give you a lot of more gain. So. Based on your taste, push this up. I pushed it around 8 dB. That's definitely going to push the amp quite a bit and give us more gain. The other thing I also did is that we could add more gain in here, but we already pretty much maxed out. So if you want more gain, what you can do is turn on the saturation drive of the amp, which is going to push the amp and give you a lot of more saturation drive as well. So I change it to authentic and I push the saturation drive to 5.1. It sounds really cool with this amp. I've never done this in any of my other videos before. So hear this out. That sounds really cool. So let's move forward. Let's go and add more things. What I did next is add in a chorus. Now, Steve doesn't mention anything about a chorus in his post but i definitely hear a lot of modulation going on in the tone could be something that they added in the post or could be something that steve didn't mention about but what you can do is use in a chorus block here what i like to do to get that real 80 sort of a feel is use a quad chorus i'm going to use a tri-chorus block that i found from a gentleman on the exchange uh, this is a blocks that i have saved to my disc and I can link it down in the description box below for you guys to check it out. So the moment you turn that on, what's gonna happen is it's gonna apply a few settings, which obviously I'm gonna save some time and just run through it. These are saved into the block. That's why they get, you know, it turns on like that. You can tweak it and change it as well. 
I'm just too lazy to do that. So what I did is I brought down the master rate to 0.1. Uh, feedback I pushed up a little bit as well to around 18%. And the master time I brought it down to 22%, changed uh, input mode to stereo and brought the mix down 15, 50% definitely seems quite a lot. So bring it down to around 17% and then let's hear how it is sounding now. So it's got that top edge and it's you can already hear the amp kind of being pushed and you know getting us that saturation drive which is really cool. Now the other thing that I did to add that more 80 sort of authentic feel is that I went into the cab which is mic the 67 condenser mic, went into the room section and added a bit of air around 20% of air. What is air? Imagine you're playing an amp without a cab. It's going to sound really fizzy and it's not going to sound uh, really good at all. But this, what it does, it simulates the real feel of an amp. I brought down the frequency, I believe, to around 6800. That sounds good, again, by ear. This, the difference is very minor. Use headphones, you'll definitely feel uh, a lot of difference happening. So let's keep it at that. And what I did next is add an enhanced block. Now, this is another block that I've been starting to use a lot these days. It definitely widens the sound and gives you that stereo sort of an effect. I'm already playing stereo, but the enhanced block definitely gives that extra touch that you need. So go ahead and select an enhancer from here. What I'm gonna do is bring down the width to 40%. Depth, I'm gonna push up to around 75% and low cut to around 80 Hertz. High cut, I'm gonna push to around 9,500 Hertz. Now with that done, this is how it sounds. The tone is there, but it's definitely missing the, the, the effects, the delay, the reverb, right? So let's go ahead and add that now, which is a key, key factor of this particular tone. Let's go ahead and add the delay block here. Uh, it's a very ambient sort of a effect that I hear when I hear the actual track. So I tried out a different delay this time. I tried an ambient stereo. I set the tempo or the time to around dotted eight. The tempo is 107 BPM. Feedback, I believe I pushed it to around 40%. I think that should be fine. Uh, mix, I think I brought it down to around 8%. Not too much delay happening in there. So with that done, this is how it sounds. <laughs> That sounds really cool. If you want to add in a little bit of more drive, go into the dynamic section of the amp, change the output comp type to feedback and push the output comp based on your taste. Now I like to set it to around 1.6. That definitely adds in a bit of more gain and it's going to give you a lot of more sustain as well in a way, right? So that's pretty much the basic tone, but we're missing one key element, which is the reverb. Now, the reverb is a huge game changer in this particular preset. When it comes to reverb, there are a couple of ways to do it. You can add it in series over here after the delay, before the delay, it doesn't matter. But you can also do it as add in parallel. What I recommend is adding in parallel always, that way you can set the mix to around 100% and tweak the level accordingly. That way you have a you know, drive it, drive it sort of signal chain happening. But in this case, I did something completely different. I generally tend to use the reverbs from the XFX2 and I'm not saying they're not good in any way. They're excellent, excellent reverbs and they're great in quality. But this time I tried something different. I used a VST on the actual demo that you heard in the beginning of the track. Uh, I'm talking about a VST which is free. So don't worry, you can download it and you can use it in whatever DAW you have. The VST is called Valhalla Supermassive. Uh, I cannot recommend this VST enough. It's absolutely amazing and I use it in pretty much most of my mixes. If you are a guitar player or a vocalist, you definitely need to have this reverb in your arsenal of VST plugins. So I've got it set up as a sense uh, at the moment I'm not going to go into details as to how to set up a sense sort of a channel so I've got the Valhalla Supermassive plugin VST 
into the as an insert into the actual sense track uh, i've got the mix to around 64 percent with 100 percent. you can see all the settings here this is using the mode of serious minor and it's a 80s mod room uh, sort of a preset which i tweaked a little bit to get this sort of an effect now what i'm doing is i'm sending that on my guitar signal here as a sense i'm going to switch it on now it's off it's going to send 4.43 db i think of the signal to the reverb and that's going to add that effect as a mix of a wet signal to the actual mix as well sounds really cool so hear this out i'm going to turn it on and let's hear how this is sounding so it's turned down it's sent as a post i believe and not as a pre so this is how it sounds <laughs> That sounds lovely, doesn't it? That reverb is so good and so lush and it sounds absolutely excellent. In case you're wondering how you can do that in the XFX2, let's just switch this off for a second, back to the normal tone. I'll quickly show you what I would do if I were adding a reverb in the XFX2. I would add it in parallel and I would connect the dots and uh, just a quick dirty implementation what i would use is a large hall sort of a or a london plate large hall would sound really cool change the quality to high and push the mix up to 100 percent and uh, let's see how this is sounding <laughs> That sounds really cool as well. It's quite close to what I used in the VST, but let me know in the comments, which one do you think sounds better? Well, that's pretty much it. That's the tone. I hope you guys enjoyed the preset and uh, let me know if you guys want me to put this up on the axe change. I really prefer that you guys watch the video and dial the preset along with me, but I've been getting a lot of requests of late for me to put the presets directly on axe change. It kind of defeats the purpose of making a video, to be honest. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I really prefer that you guys watch the video, dial it along with me. It's more fun and it's definitely more informative from my point of view. So, and it gives me the watch time. <laughs> so it's a win-win for both of us. But before we wrap up this video for today, it's time for the honorable mentions for this particular video. So I really want to thank Stephen Upton, Pietro Tognoli, and Adam Wilkie, who made a contribution towards my paypal account thank you so much guys i hope i got your names right and if you're wondering what is an honorable mention and why you would probably need to contribute towards my paypal you might be thinking you are a youtuber you have thousands of subscribers you have thousands of views you must be making millions of dollars no 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 and no <laughs> i cannot say it multiple times i cannot say it enough no i don't most of my videos on the channel are copyright claimed why are they copyright claimed if you've ever done a guitar cover or a vocal cover of a particular track using a backing track you will know that the moment you play more than a few seconds of a particular clip you'll get probably a copyright claim on the video and hence the entire video is going to be demonetized you won't be making any money whatsoever from it now why am i taking the time to explain this it's important that you understand why i have a paypal link in my description box below it's not that i am going around chasing money but as they say time is money i'm investing a lot of time in making these presets giving them out to you for free and obviously imparting whatever knowledge i have incurred over the course of three years or four years that I've been running the channel. So if you want to help me and support me in a monetary way, in a financial way, please do go ahead and check the link for my PayPal down in the description box below so that you can support me in making more of these free presets for you guys. It makes sense, right? Goes without saying, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. 
please put down your comments down below i read each one of them i love each one of them thank you for your support everybody every time who puts in a comment i really really love reading them and i try to reply to all of them as well until i see you guys in the next video make sure you stay subscribed if you aren't please go ahead and do so and also please be safe keep rocking guys cheers bye bye